What we need to understand is that, uh, first of all, I'm a huge fan of Mr. Rahman. What we need to Who understand... Is Everyone is. I can see the entire country. The entire country is a fan of A.R. Rahman. Yeah. Uh, also, we also need to understand, see what, what happens often and what I have faced myself, is that the audience often comes to a show expecting uh, Thinking that the that the performance, that the act, whoever is performing, owes them something. Uh, that just because they paid money for it, um, it has to be just the way they want it to be. Which, to be honest, is not fair because an art performance is different from buying a commodity. It's not like buying uh, your favorite chocolate. You can't expect it to taste it the same way for years and years. It's not like that. Also. Um, Mr. I I just went through some facts actually online and I found out that I think 55% of the set list was Hindi songs. What most of his fans, what general fans don't understand is that Rahman is more than just Bollywood. When when there's an R Rahman show happening, it's not just Air Rahman's uh, best Bollywood numbers. Exactly. It's A.R. Rahman's entire discography, which is Bollywood. A.R. Rahman is a legend. A.R. Rahman is an institution. Uh, he's, he's one of our You are absolutely right, Bhavya. A.R. Rahman is an institution. He's a legend. But let me also you know, bring in he's a James. He's absolutely. There's, and there is no dispute in the fact. James, uh, if I could come to you once again, help us understand why you said that, yes, uh, someone who's walking up or who's going in for a concert, he will now be very, very clear that, look, I have come for a Tamil concert or I have come for a Hindi concert. But the fact is, is it right when we say that music transcends all barriers, music transcends everything, music, uh, you know, is, is an outpouring of love, of affection, of everything that binds us together. Is it right to compartmentalize music like this? So, yeah, this universal philosophy of music has no language will not apply to Indian film music for two reasons. Uh, one is it is Indian film music, which has a, it's a different genre. And the second one is it doesn't apply to a live concert of a big celebrity like Yair Rahman. The first reason is why it is different from the other music. Indian film music is loved and liked by film uh, fans for, on various factors. First, it could be the song of my favorite hero, who has nothing to do actually with the audio part of the song. My favorite heroine, who has lifted it on the screen. The favorite lyric writer, favorite playback singer. It could be so many factors. It came in my favorite director's film, who picturizes a song so well. So an Indian film music fan has so many reasons to like a song or a singer or a composer. When it comes to here, Rahman being the kind of uh, Pan India composer that he is, who has uh, a, a very what uh, a proud repertoire of uh, songs in Tamil, Malayalam, Telugu, and Hindi, you should know what to expect of him. Now, like how it's been publicized in Canada. Now, when it's there is an exclusive Tamil concert, no one is going to walk in being disappointed. The same way. No, no, but, 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 but the point is, but, but the point is that you know that the way, but 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 one concert. But, but also, James also helps me understand this. Uh, you know, somewhere down the line, there are issues which are getting blurred over here. Because yes, here's a, someone walking into a, a concert which has essentially been be, uh, dealing with Tamil numbers. There is no confusion in that. The fact of the matter is, what really happened in UK and what prompted A.R. Rahman to come up with that? That program too had a Tamil title, as Lata, my colleague, was pointing out. So the audience went in expecting that yes, A.R. Rahman, they would be jiving to A.R. Rahman numbers. Somewhere down the line, they felt that the proportion of regional songs vis-a-vis -vis songs that A.R. Rahman dished out in Hindi, that did not balance out. Which is why that gave us 
you know, the, the entire cover of the uh, virtual world to hit out at AR and MR. What did we do? We ended up lowering our own self in public view in front of this whole world. Yeah. Now, generally, let's not take this virtual world so seriously because it's been so corrupted. Trolling is so simple because these people who troll are faceless people. So that is that is people. the most unfortunate part. part. That is the that, that is the, the area of concern. To respond to them, no? Exactly. And so th that is the area of concern, isn't it, Lata? Let me bring you in once again, Lata. Just you know, uh, help us understand. Now, when we say when we talk of trolls, we are essentially talking of uh, unknown faceless people, but people who are a living reality of our time, and that has paid a music director like A.R. Rahman to such an extent that he's had to come out with a promo and also include towards the end of the promo that, that bit about Hindi and Tamil. Though he also added a photo, though that he's not misunderstood and trolled again, he said, I'm just joking. Is the advent of smartphones and the internet um, everybody has access to social media, whether they're 10 years old or they're 90 years old. Everyone has access to social media. And uh, people want to voice their opinions on absolutely every single aspect of life. Right. And whether it's an AR demo or some, you know, something they see in the road every day, everybody wants to talk about it. Everybody wants their voice heard. They're nameless, they're faceless. But they have an opinion, and their opinion carries a lot of weight on social media because it's millions of people. It's not one or two people that we're talking right. about. Right. So it's virtually yeah. Rata, a sea it's of humanity there uh, when you talk of the virtual world, and as you rightly said, millions of people out there, faceless, nameless people out there. One last word from you, Mr. Banerjee. You know what AR Rahman has done today. Should other celebrities also do the like? Uh, I think uh, they should, but I would like to also state that you know our audience needs, needs a lot of going up to do. I mean, in the middle of the concert, we, we know there are phones ringing, and they must understand that the performer on stage, any musician, any dancer, anybody, a poet, you know, has a is it a certain state of mind? Right. It, uh, has a certain you know mood, so he performs accordingly. And it cannot be as per, of course, he is safe Right, everyone. absolutely. So as you are saying clearly, and as is very, very evident from uh, what, we, what we discussed today with this panel, that, you know, though we might have bought tickets for a particular function, that does not really give us a right to own that program. We have gone in, we have walked in on our own free will to listen to a musician. Here is the performer on the stage, let's give it to him. And what we have done with A.R. Rahman clearly cannot be justified at any count. On that note, it's time to wrap up this debate, but I must thank all my guests who joined us to make this such an animated discussion. But we we'll for sure keep a close eye on what Rahman sings and crew in Canada in October. Good night and thanks for watching.